What's up, E units? This is Case Steel, and welcome to another video for you. In 2017, a game called Ukulele was released. The game was developed by Platonic Games, a studio comprised of former Rare employees, and was advertised as a return to the 3D platformers of the fifth generation. Despite a somewhat mixed reception, the game was enough of a success to warrant somewhat of a sequel, to which what you see on screen is, well, our sequel. I got Ukulele on Switch, and while it had its issues, I generally had a fun time. So when I saw this trailer, I was pretty happy. But what is in this trailer? What are we going to get for the sequel? Well, let's find out. So we start off with a book opening revealing our two characters, Yuka and Lele, who do a little dance before the title pops up. I personally really like the title. It has a very Indiana Jones feel to it, not to mention the logo looks like Indiana Jones, and considering what's in the trailer and therefore in the game, it's pretty appropriate. We are then shown the game's 2D levels to which they have a very Donkey Kong Country feel to them. While it has the ukulele aesthetics of rich colors and vibrant energy, it has that layout, similar level elements, and that dynamicism you find in Donkey Kong Country, especially in the recent ones, with all these moving elements. I personally think that the Donkey Kong Country series are a set of exceptional 2D platformers, and to see ukulele doing this is pretty exciting. We are then shown the game's 3D overworlds, which have a top-down perspective applied. These overworlds remind me of The Legend of Zelda due to this top-down perspective, especially when it mentions puzzles and challenges. The challenges also have a very Zelda-like feel to it, such as burning bushes or throwing water at flowers. However, what is interesting is that this sequence here with a book pretty much tells you that this is a map system rather than separate levels. This is interesting because it's a unique and different take on the concept of a map system. As opposed to doing the standard map where you have levels and you have the player going from level to level, this game takes that interactive map thing from Super Mario 3D World and takes a step further by adding challenges and puzzles and stuff like that to practically make it its own game. I personally like this idea. It's a unique spin on the map system, and it makes the game look more robust and full of interaction and playing, as opposed to just staring at the screen with minimal interaction. Besides, it looks pretty fun. We also get the mentioning that David Wise and Grant Kirkhope from Donkey Kong Country will be making the music for this game, which is pretty good because they make pretty good video game music. We are then shown the various moves that can be performed in this game, along with additional levels. The moves are pretty interesting, and some of them, especially this rolling move, seem to be taken directly from Donkey Kong Country, which is pretty cool. However, one thing I hope they take from Donkey Kong Country, at least the modern ones, is a difficulty, as I would like a good challenge. And we end with a shot of Capital B on this airship vehicle thing. While I would prefer another 3D platformer installment or DLC to the first game, this seems like it's going to be a very interesting game, and I'm excited for it. The combination of Donkey Kong Country style 2D platforming with a world map that is like a top-down Zelda dungeon makes this game pretty unique compared to other platformers, even Mario. Further adding to this uniqueness is something I read where the developers are going to try and add 3D platformer elements, which will make this pretty interesting of an experience. I don't think I really have any concerns about this game other than I hope that this game will provide a decent challenge. I guess another thing this game could do is hopefully modernize properly while still having that nostalgic element and its own identity. While I personally think that nostalgia is being overplayed beyond death at this point, it's okay to be nostalgic. But it's not okay to be stuck in the past, which was an issue with the first game with things like horrible camera. We need to realize that this isn't the 1990s anymore, but the upcoming 2020s, and expectations and norms have changed. We need to accept this and keep moving forward. This doesn't mean that we can't have platformers, but that we need to evolve them into the current decade and keep doing so for upcoming decades. And I hope that Ukulele and the Impossible Lair can do so for itself. 
overall, this game looks pretty interesting and unique, and I'm excited to play it. That's all I have to say about it, and until next time, this is Case Steel signing out. I'll see you all later. This was a Cobalt Steel video by MS Burmy. Like, comment, and subscribe if you liked what you saw. Until next time, see you all later. Damn global warming.